The year is 2021 AD, and music is being shipped and distributed to consumers who are quick to move on at a rapid pace. Merchandise is being bundled, and aggressive social media presence is an industry standard that is being spearheaded by the hip-hop genre, which is seeming to be the most influential genre to date. New artists are being introduced daily as equipment costs and quality expectations have begun to ease, and consumers are becoming more lax in reception over the years. But things may have looked a lot more serious if one influencer hadn't stepped in to change the landscape forever. Hello, I'm Kako5440, and this is what would happen to hip hop if Lil B never happened. Boot up, Alpha. Lil B came into this world as Brandon McCartney in Berkeley, California. He learned how to rap using a website called OLA.com by taking hip hop lyrics and changing the words around to reflect his own life. This was around 2005 around the same time when he took on the name Lil B. In high school, he made friends with one Lloyd Amadhibo, otherwise known as Young L, and they grouped up with Keith Stunnaman Jenkins and DeMonte Lil Uno Johnson to form the hip hop group, The Pack. Young L was quoted saying, B had been rapping for a while, he just had nobody to make him beats, and I didn't have anybody to rap over my beats, so we just hooked up. In June of 2005, The Pack would release the mixtape Wolfpack Music Volume 1, and the single from the tape, Booty Bounce Popper, would gain traction locally within a year. Following that, in March 2006, The Pack released the Wolfpack Music Volume 2 on the social media platform MySpace. This mixtape would have their biggest single, Vans, on it. Vans would later catch the attention of notorious San Francisco Bay Area rapper, Too Short, who would then sign them to a record deal to his record label, Up All Night, a subsidiary of Jive Records. With this cosign, Vance would peak at number 23 on the top 30 hip hop charts and was listed at number 5 on Rolling Stone Magazine's Best Songs of 2006 list. In 2007, the pack would release their debut album, Bass Boys, which included four music videos, one of which included a then unknown Tyga. Due to lackluster sales, in 2008, the pack would be released from Jive Records. They would then land with the Los Angeles based independent label, where they would continue to work on future projects for the pack. The group, however, would also work on each other's solo projects and careers, which would lead to Lil B releasing his first digital album, I'm Thrax, on September 2009. This album would be the conduit for a career that would change hip hop forever. Okay, now let's break down the impact Lil B actually had on the culture during the peak of what was called by its originator, bass culture. Of course, Lil B would never come out and claim these shifts, but we can use context clues to evaluate Lil B's cultural impact while he was initially received in the culture. In a genre where quality and lyrical ability are highly scrutinized, Lil B would take the unorthodox and highly debated approach of quantity over quality. Too Short had this to say about Lil B's recording method. B used to, back in 05 and 06, he used to freestyle. Well, he called them freestyle albums. He'd go in there, he'd go in the booth, and one take Jake all of them. This is evidenced by the fact that Lil B, in 2010 alone, released 14 projects, including his Reign in England album and Wolfpack Party with the pack in September and August, respectfully. As a matter of fact, in that same September of 2010, Lil B would release five projects, including the album. If you need another perspective, an MTV article interviewing Lil B in 2010 quoting him saying this, Last time I checked my iTunes, I have about 1,500 songs including freestyles. I probably have about 800 freestyles right now. As a recording artist, it is not uncommon to have a back catalog of music that either may or may not be released. However, Lil B would not view his music this way, instead creating over 150 MySpace accounts to promote his music and various projects, creating transparency and accessibility for his fans. His dedication to free expression would, whether or not intended, prove to be a very important and successful marketing strategy that was never brought to the mainstream before. To add to this quantity-based aesthetic, Lil B would do his duty of keeping his image visible to his fans by releasing a multitude of music videos per release. Lil B would do this right out of the gates, for example, with his debut mixtape, I'm Thrax, being released with 21 songs and 16 music videos to go with them. These videos would be produced on a limited budget to maximize the number of videos being produced, showing the mainstream industry that big budget videos weren't always necessary to reach an audience, as the videos would be generally well received. Chief Key, for example, wouldn't start releasing music videos with the same aesthetic until 2011, two years after Lil B's debut. 
Fans would appreciate the inside look of the videos, the candid location choices, Lil B's energy, as well as what Lil B would be wearing for each video. Adding to this unrestrained aesthetic, Lil B would often be seen wearing beaded jewelry, floral blazers and jackets, oversized rings, earrings, and skinny jeans, light colored button shirts and v-necks, which was a largely uncommon fashion choice in the traditional hip hop scene at the time. Lil B would continue to push traditions when in 2015, he would appear on ESPN's Sports Nation program wearing a feminine white transparent blouse along with a floppy church hat and chandelier earrings, which many would call a grandma outfit. This would be one year before Young Thug would sport a dress for his No My Name Is Jeffrey album cover in 2016. It should be noted that hip hop had seen rappers dressed in somewhat feminine clothing before, just not to the extent of Lil B and his appearance in the mainstream, arguably opening up the culture to alternative presentation in hip hop. This theme of being unconventional would, of course, be prevalent in his music, influencing a sound and birthing a new genre, cloud rap. For Lil B's 2009 Six Kiss mixtape, a then unknown beatmaker would submit a beat to Lil B through MySpace after holding it for a few months saying, quote, I just didn't think he would like it. I'm God would debut at the beginning of December ahead of Six Kiss, introducing the world to Clams Casino, spawning a plethora of music video reposts and inspiring many publications to speak on this ethereal version of hip hop, which they would soon call Cloud Rap. If you search the term Cloud Rap today, you'll find claims that the style has been used by platforms such as Astari, artists such as Young Lean, Lil Peep, and ASAP Rocky to help grow their aesthetic. The last example, ASAP Rocky, would later enlist Clams Casino to work on his Live Love ASAP album, followed by Adult Swim on their 2011 singles program, Mac Miller on Blue Slide Park, The Weeknd on Echoes of Silence, and Joji on Ballads 1 in 2018, just to name a few. To continue on with unconventional themes and round off Lil B's initial impact on hip hop culture, we can go back to the beginning of 2009. On January 1st, Lil B would publish a book called Taken Over by Imposing the Positive, My Personal Rap to You, a book written in an email-like style that was meant to be Lil B's way of casually speaking directly to fans. Now, Lil B would not be the first rapper to publish his own book. Before him, there would be books from RZA from the Wu-Tang Clan, DMX, Eminem, LL Cool J, 50 Cent, Queen Latifah, and other acclaimed and undisputed legends in the genre. But that's the key word, undisputed. This was the first time that such a controversial and at the time relatively unknown rapper had released a book to fans, opening the door for book publishing instead becoming a marketing strategy for current artists instead of a legacy review. Lil B would also become the youngest rapper to ever publish a book. Reminder that this book was released on January 1st, 2009, eight months before Lil B would release his own solo project. So what happens next? On April 3rd, 2010, Lil B signed a record deal with SODMG Entertainment, Soldier Boy's label, after Soldier Boy reached out to Lil B himself. Seven years later, Lil B would tweet about the experience saying, quote, I'ma be honest, Soldier Boy was the first famous rapper to reach out and help me get on. He stole my swag in the process, but he helped. Soldier Boy would release his single, Pretty Boy Swag, for his album, The DeAndre Way, on June 8th, which would become the needed hit single for the album, reaching number 34 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. It would resemble a song Lil B released the same year called I Go Woogie. Lil B and Soldier Boy would also release an extended play together called Pretty Boy Millionaires, hosted by DJ Woogie. Later in Soldier Boy's career, Lil B would continue to help Soldier Boy explore his sound by connecting him with Clamps Casino to create experimental songs like The World Needs Change and All I Need. These and other releases would be the catalyst to Soldier Boy becoming and pursuing a more pretty boy aesthetic in both fashion and music style, but Soldier Boy's videos for another day. Not everyone would be so friendly to Lil B and his style, landing him a few notable rap beefs with rappers such as Joe Budden, The Game, Joey Badass, and A Boogie with the Hoodie. Joey Badass's beef, which he would later claim was staged, would arguably be the reason Joey Badass was discovered in the first place. In early 2012, Joey Badass and his longtime collaborator Capital Steez would release a song called Survival Tactics, in which Steez said the following line, They say hard work pays off, well tell the bass god don't quit his day job. Lil B and Joey Badass would proceed to go back and forth on social media platform Twitter, causing quite a stir when Lil B's fans would flood Joey Badass's accounts with messages. Joey Badass would soon close his own Twitter account. During the commotion, Joey Badass would soon be featured on MTV News to speak about his verse from Survival Tactics, exposing Badass to a wider audience. In an age of mumble rap, cloud rap, and traditionalists, Lil B's strategy and influence to flooding the market with confidence in his music and approach to his fans is apparent. Artists and labels are searching for new ways to connect an artist directly to their fan base. 
free expression and a don't take yourself too seriously attitude is commonplace in today's music, social media presence, and archetypes. Lo-fi music and music videos are more accepted and platforms have risen to further the sound and aesthetic. The boundaries of hip hop fashion have been broadened and opened to new choices and audiences, and Lil B's influence continues to transform and open independent music well after his initial offering. This is a video about what would happen to hip hop if Lil B never happened. These are our claims. Number one, Lil B was a pioneer in rap fashion, cementing light colored polo shirts, skinny jeans, and a pretty boy aesthetic into the mainstream. The progression from a more gangster focus through a jerking dance movement to a more lighthearted landscape would occur with Lil B influencing people like Soulja Boy to follow. Number two, alternative themes and freedom of expression would grow in the rap genre because of Lil B. From Lil B's fashion choices to his choice of words in his music, Lil B introduced the world to alternative themes which would make it easier for people like Ty the Creator, ASAP Rocky, and Lil Nas X to be received by a mainstream market. Number three, Lil B and the Pack were the ones to introduce Tyga to the mainstream. Tyga was first introduced to the world in the October 2007 release of the Pack's In My Car music video as a cameo. He was also shouted out by Lil B in the Pack's Bass Boys album CD cover insert. Number four, Lil B created Cloud Rap. Without Lil B's release of I'm God by Lil B and producer Clams Casino, we no longer have many artists who are directly influenced by that sound. Meaning, No Clams Casino, ASAP Rocky, Mac Miller, Young Lean, Lil Peep, Six Dogs, Joji, Lil Boom, Lil Pump, and YouTube platforms such as Astari and DJ Vlad. In conclusion, Lil B continues to flood the market to this day through his own independent label, Bass World Records. In December of 2020, he released his 75th mixtape, Hoop Life 2, which is seven and a half hours long. He now gives lectures at universities, such as University of Florida and MIT, to speak about his influence, vision, and goals as an independent artist. Whether or not you enjoy his music, Lil B has created so much content that it's hard not to find remnants of his style in today's hip hop scene. Audiences now expect more transparency from artists and social media, and music is now being released and received at a rapid pace. Music marketing has even seen a shift in an increase of burner accounts and meme pages, which are now commonplace when promoting an artist. In short, Lil B was ahead of his time and helped shape the culture of hip hop today. But what about you? How did you hear about Lil B? Was this your first time hearing about him? Did you not know about him before this video? If so, what song will you listen to next? Do you believe in his influence on the culture? Give us your answers below in the comments and feel free to join us as we continue this series and explore other types of content in Space Station. Link in the description below. Thank you, Alpha.